Hi and welcome back. In this video, I will talk a little bit about two really important 19th century women American writers, Sarah Orne Jewett and Kate Chopin. First up, Sarah Orne Jewett, really amazing writer. Now, what is really important to know about her is that she is off of the beaten literary path. She's born and raised in South Berwick, Maine. So she's not coming out of New England. She's not coming out of the South. She is in some ways on the borders of American culture. And we've seen this theme before, especially in 75A. Um, she was the daughter of an obstetrician um, a doctor who really took seriously her education and he helped to educate her and to really develop and culture her mind. The result of that is some really truly amazing literature coming out of this exemplary writer. And she helps us really understand the important idea of regionalism. Now, regionalism is very important, especially in America, because there are so many different corners of the nation that have very different ways of speaking about things and very different topics to speak about. And like it says in the bullet point, she talks about and writes in a mode that emphasizes speech variations, uh, different kinds of people different ways of living, uh, social lives and cultures all over different, but not necessarily central literary and cultural and economic hubs. I mean, Maine is very, very rural, rural, very, very agricultural at this point, And it still is today in many ways. And another interesting point about Sarah Orne Jewett is that she had a Boston marriage with Annie, Annie Adams Fields, who was the wife of her publisher. Now, a Boston marriage is a 19th century term for somebody who was very, very close to another person of the same sex. And it was uh, almost entirely used for women. In other words, it was, it was a term used for women who were involved in same-sex relationships and because they were somewhat near places of influence and because they had enough uh, money and status these things uh, these relationships were tolerated in a way that may not have been so in other regions of america at this point And she, Jewett is also known for having a very keen psychological insight about the women of her era, um, what their concerns were, what their values were, um, the way they had to negotiate and navigate themselves through the patriarchy, through this very male dominated society at the time. So she is a fantastic writer for us to look at. And when we read the, the White Heron, I think it'll become very, very clear just how much it's taking place from this rural New England uh, setting and that it's related to and focused on female experience. We have this young girl who is um, barely barely squeaking it by with her grandmother and her name is Sylvie that comes from Sylvia and Sylvia itself is a name that goes all the way back to uh, classical Greek from the their word for forest or woods so she is of nature and relating to nature and defending nature and in a white heron she does talk about how Sylvie has to make this decision between telling this hunter or this taxidermist who wants to find this white heron and basically kill it and stuff it 
if she's going to give him that information, even though that money will make a big difference to her and her grandmother, or if she should preserve that nature, make it something between her and the white heron, between her and the natural world versus her and uh, the urban world, the world of money and the world of basically male-dominated financial influence. Fantastic stuff here. Oh, so much to think about when we, when we take a look at her. And Kate Chopin is another really, really important woman writer of the 19th century, but from a very, very different region of the United States. She's not coming from Maine. She's coming 